you'll be getting your hands on a Steam Deck sooner than you thought. So when you're looking at the unconventional way that Valve has handled pre-orders with the Steam Deck, I think there's some good and some bad to the entire situation. On the good side, the fact that they required $5 up front to basically guarantee your place in line, I think that's a really smart move on their part. It hasn't completely stopped scalpers, but it definitely made it harder for scalpers to just buy up the entire inventory of Steam Decks, throw them up on StockX for two grand and call it a day. There's still quite a few scalpers out there for sure, but I've also seen some people being really cool about it where they got a Steam Deck, their pre-order came up really early, they got it in hand and they didn't really love it all that much, so they put it on eBay for a fair price. I've also seen a guy who went on the subreddit and said, yeah, when I ordered this thing, I was going to and from work a lot, but now I'm not really doing that so much anymore. I don't really need the device. So he basically just sold it for the cost of the device and shipping to someone on Reddit, which again, I think is pretty cool. The downsides to this pre-order system though are obviously A, that it's slow. It takes a little while to get through the entire batch of pre-orders because so many people want a Steam Deck. And B, if you weren't in that first group of Steam Decks, you know, the launch one and then Q1, that gap of Q2 and Q3 is extremely long and kind of vague. People have also gotten pushed around a little bit or misunderstood the vague wording Valve was using from the beginning, but now it's not only getting easier to narrow down when your Steam Deck will be ready to be ordered, it's also going to come a whole lot quicker because Valve announced this week that not only are they increasing the amount of Steam Decks that will be available in each pre-order chunk, they're also going to be doing multiple pre-orders a week. The tweet on the official Steam Deck Twitter says, welcome to Q2. We've just sent out the first set of order emails to Q2 reservers in order of reservation time. Starting today, we're ramping up Steam Deck shipments and we'll be sending out more availability emails every week, sometimes even twice in a week. We've also updated the Steam Deck product page to clarify what Q2, Q3, and after Q3 mean in terms of months. No reservation windows have been changed or delayed, only some additional info. Log in and visit this page to see your quarterly estimates. So that last part is obviously for people who have already pre-ordered it, but if you head over to the page, you can actually see the breakdown of what each quarter means. Since my pre-order already came up and I don't have another one pre-ordered on my account, I'm not even sure if you can do that. Like after you buy it, I don't know if you can pre-order another one. So right now it just basically lists after Q3 and then in parentheses, it says October, 2022 or later. So if you're in the Q2 batch, you'll probably be getting your Steam Deck before June. And obviously if you're in Q3, you'll be getting it between July in September. The only thing that bugs me about this wording from Valve is that I wish for the after Q3 people, they said between October, 2022, and then a set month. They're not giving a range for that. And I kind of wish they would, because if you're in that group, like you ordered a Steam Deck, like extraordinarily late compared to everyone else, not knowing when you're going to get it kind of sucks. But you know, they are increasing the amount of Steam Decks they're shipping out each week, which is great. And hopefully, at least for now, this whole shortage of devices is ending. I know over on Xbox Ready, my buddy Ray's channel, he was just talking about how we're finally at the point with the Xbox Series X where you can walk into Target and nine times out of 10, you'll probably just see one sitting on the shelf, which is crazy. I know the situation is nowhere near the same with the PS5 that is still, if you took all the consoles that are available right now and then pick the one that's being scalped the most, it's 100% the PS5 and also Sony is just making less PS5s than Xboxes, but still things are getting a lot easier in terms of getting these things into people people's hands. And I'm glad that that is extending to the Steam Deck as well, at least it seems. The silver lining here though, for people who are in Q2 or Q3 is that the longer you wait, the better Steam Deck you're going to get when it finally arrives. I mean, on the hardware side, they're gonna work out those kinks I talked about in my one month later video, like how the bottom kind of creaks. And then there's some other issues like with the B button that people are having to RMA their consoles because the B button is getting stuck. I bet you a lot of that stuff will be sorted out very quickly and Valve won't really say anything about it. They'll just put the new newer, more improved button version in people's orders and just let it slide because we've seen Sony do the same thing with the DualShock 4. When the PS4 came out, the rubber would come off the thumbsticks really easy. Sony never even really acknowledged it. And then suddenly it just didn't happen anymore. Like they fixed something behind the scenes without saying anything very quickly, very quietly. Wouldn't be surprised if Valve did the same thing with the Steam Deck. And then on the software side, you are going to have a dramatically better console than the one that came out on launch day. I had a Steam Deck on launch day 
today, as you all know, and the software performance as a whole is just completely night and day. Games run better, games crash less, working in the desktop mode is a lot smoother and a lot easier than it was before. We just got that update I talked about in my last video where you have the split trackpad keyboard in the game mode and then that game mode keyboard has also made its way over to desktop. Like just everything that people have been requesting from Valve from the very beginning, they not only have been implementing in the Steam Deck, but they've been doing it really quickly and that's awesome. So yeah, I know it sucks sitting on the outside watching people enjoy this thing, but the longer you wait, the better of a device you're going to get. I just really, really hope that for these after Q3 people, they don't get their Steam Deck, really enjoy it for a couple weeks, and then Valve turns around and announces the Steam Deck too. Linus made a great point in a podcast, I think it was The Wan Show, a couple weeks back, where he said he doesn't think it's going to be that quick of a turnaround for a Steam Deck 2 because they're not using off-the-shelf parts. Like with the iNeo Next and all these other devices like the One X Player, you see more iterations on those devices because they're really using a lot of off-the-shelf parts that come out quicker and are more available. The Steam Deck has a lot of custom design parts, especially with its chipset, so when you're having stuff like that made, that's made to last a little bit longer than a year turnaround. So if you're in that after Q3 group, I'd be pretty confident that you're going to have the Steam Deck for at least a year or two before we see a second one. But I do think we are going to see a second one because we're already seeing other devices like the One X Player Mini, like a future iteration of it, is going to include Steam OS instead of Windows, which is awesome. Because the more people who support Steam OS, the more incentive Valve has to stick with this device, which is what I really want in the end. Speaking of new games coming out that people really want to play on the Steam Deck, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is finally here. I had a shirt on to celebrate when I got to work this morning, but then we did a photo shoot for our awesome new merch, which includes this incredible Deck Ready Doom Eternal logo t-shirt. If you want to get one of your very own, I will have a link in the description, and I think it should show up in the merch shelf of this video, but either way, it's linked in the description. Anyway, getting back on track here, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is finally out. I'm super excited. The thing that got me the most hyped for this game, other than the fact that I have extreme nostalgia for the LEGO Star Wars games, like they're some of the earliest memories I have playing games, I saw this video where if you're playing as Mandalorian, he has a little Grogu following him around, obviously, in his little pod. If you aim your weapon at the pod, the little pod gate closes, and I think that's awesome. It's super cute. I'm just super excited because Star Wars is my second favorite thing in the entire world after Halloween. Now, at first I was sitting there like, there's no way this game will not run out of the box on the Steam Deck. I know they improved the graphics by quite a bit, but the LEGO games have never really been all that hard to run. And with a little bit of tweaking, people have been getting the other LEGO games to run just fine on the Steam Deck. But then there were some articles saying that not only has LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga been tested on the Steam Deck, it was found by Valve to be unsupported, which really bummed me out because this is like the perfect portable game. When I was a kid, I had LEGO Star Wars 1 on GameCube, but my grandpa bought me LEGO Star Wars 2 on PSP and that was the place to play it. I 100% of that game twice. It's one of my favorite games and I wanted that experience on a Steam Deck because you know, this game's also available on Switch. I wanted to see how this version would run circles around it. So yeah, naturally I was kind of disappointed to read this news, but I did some tweaking, I did some messing around and I have found that not only is there a way to get this game to run on the Steam Deck, you can also get it to run at full resolution with max settings and lock it at 30 frames per second. Now obviously it would be nice if it ran at 60, but if you look at its competition, which in my opinion is the Nintendo Switch version, it's not only running at a much lower resolution, it also doesn't really hold its 30 frames per second target. There's a lot of slowdown. So not having that slowdown on the Steam Deck version is excellent. If you just have an out of the box Steam Deck, you can go to the game in your library, download it to your device, go over to the little settings gear and under compatibility, set it to Proton Experimental. It will work, but you'll see frame drops and cutscenes, and the cutscenes are actually pretty pretty good and well rendered in this, like the intro one alone, gave me chills as a Star Wars fan. So if you don't want to deal with that slowdown and frame droppage in the cutscenes, you're going to want to get Proton GE. I'm going to keep this super basic because like with other Linux things, I don't completely understand how it works. And basically what Proton GE is, is it's like a custom version of Proton that's a little bit ahead of Valve's version. So sometimes it's a little bit buggier than Valve's version of Proton, but it gets games like Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, and other games that are unsupported like Batman Arkham Asylum to run really well on the Steam Deck. So overall, it's a net positive. This version of Proton got really famous with Steam Deck users when everyone was kind of freaking out about Persona 4 Golden not being supported out of the gate on the Steam Deck because, you know, 
that's a Vita game that was ported to PC, so naturally you'd really want to play it on the Steam Deck. Well, the issue was that the cutscenes didn't really work in the normal version of Proton, so Proton GE fixed that and people were really excited. There's a whole bunch of tutorials on YouTube, but honestly, you probably don't need one because it's pretty simple to install. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the desktop mode and look for an app in the Discover Store called Proton Up QT. And then once you've installed it, you just open up the app and then pick the versions of Proton GE you want installed on your device. You can use quite a few different versions of this to get good performance out of Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. The one that worked the best for me is Proton GE 7.14. 7.2 seems to work exactly the same. I just haven't played as much with that version of it, but that's the latest version. So if you want to be running that, that one should work just fine with Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. And then after that, you just click install. You wait a couple minutes for everything to clean up. You exit Steam on the desktop side, completely shut down your Steam Deck. Don't just head back into gaming mode. Make sure it's either shut down or you hit restart. And then when you restart, you head back over to that same settings menu for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Go to compatibility. And now you will see the GE versions of Proton you installed, in addition to the normal Valve ones you see there all the time. I've talked about this in other videos, but if I can't fully lock a game at 60 frames per second, I'm not talking about like small dips, right? Like if you're going into a save room or something like that and it drops to 58, I'm fine with that. But if I'm just walking around a world in a game and I'm still getting frame drops, that's when I'll just start locking a game to 30 frames per second. Because if I can get that close to 60, it's definitely gonna run locked at 30. And that has definitely been the experience with Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. On my main PC, I'm playing it at 60. And honestly, dropping down to 30 isn't that noticeable. You're not doing anything crazy in these games. I know that it has a new version of the third person shooting that it had in the older games, where it's kind of like a riff on Gears of War style shooting. But even then, it's really simple. This game is incredibly easy. It's supposed to be fun. And if you're a huge Star Wars fan like me and you just enjoy that universe and reading and experiencing stuff in it, I feel like this is kind of the perfect game for you. And you probably already bought it at this point, so I don't need to explain it. But yeah, I just saw so many people who were a little upset and a little disappointed when they saw that article that said that it was unsupported on the Steam Deck. So I wanted to dig in and see if there was a way to get it running. And honestly, it's so easy that I feel like everyone should do it, especially if you want to play this game. 